What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. My name is Sam. This is the Keep On Coding channel and today I'm going to be talking about a phone interview that I had with Facebook. They're a pretty big company. You might have heard of them and how this is going to work is I'm going to show you the prompt of the question. We're going to diagram a solution up and finally we're going to code up that solution. Before we start, I do want to say that this is the second half of an hour long interview and it was for a new grad role. And the first half was a dynamic programming problem, which is actually a problem on LeetCode. So I'll leave a link to that in the description. The problem I'm going to be going over today, I thought was a lot more interesting. Um, so that's what we're going to be going over. So let's just get right into it. All right. So the problem that I was given was you are given a list of flight start and end times. Determine the maximum amount of airplanes in the air at the same time. And this was the example that was provided. We have three flights here with each of their start and end times. So the first flight takes off at time two and lands at time five. The other one starts at time three, ends at time seven, and then finally start time of eight and an end time of nine. So we return two. Why is that? Well, when this second plane takes off at time three, the first plane is still in the air. So at that point, we have two planes in the air. Finally, when the third plane starts, these two planes have both landed. So we only have one flight in the air at that time. So our maximum amount of planes in the air at the same time is two. So now that we're given the prompt, we want to ask questions that will clarify what they're actually asking. A lot of times these problems will be kind of vague because they want you to actually ask questions and clarify what you're actually solving before you try to solve it. So one thing you could ask here is, okay, is a plane in the air at its start or end time? For example, if we add a fourth plane in here that starts at time nine and ends at time 11, does this overlap with the plane before? Like are these, since this has an end time of nine and a start time of nine, are these considered to be in the air at the same time? And the answer is no. Once a plane ends, they're no longer considered in the air. However, at a start time of nine, that plane is considered to be in the air. All right, so now that we understand the problem, let's go ahead and try and diagram a solution out. So we wanna diagram this problem out using five flights here, as you can see on the left. So how do we wanna solve this problem? Well, what we can do is we can basically simulate these flights as they take off and land and just keep track of how many are in the air at any given time. So here we can keep a list and we'll just call it flights in the air. And initially it won't have any flights, right? And the other thing we wanna do is we want to have a variable here that keeps track of the maximum amount of flights that we've seen in the air. Initially, it's going to be zero. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to look at the first flight that takes off. So that's going to be at start time two. And we're just going to go ahead and add this to our list. And then right now our flights in the air is one. So we're going to go ahead and update this to a one. Okay, now the next flight is going to be here at time four. So we go ahead and first check are any of the flights in the air landed at time four. Since this one is still going to be in the air, the answer is no. So we go ahead and add our flight. Now we have two flights in the air. We go ahead and update our max flights to two. And let's go ahead and cross off these flights so we keep track of what's taken off. So the next flight that takes off is gonna be this one here at time nine. Now at time nine, both of these flights have already landed. So we can go ahead and remove them from our flights in the air list. So let's go ahead and add our nine and 18. We now have one flight in the air, so we wouldn't update this max flights variable. So we cross that off the list. Then we go to our 10 and 21 flight. We see that at time 10, nothing has landed. So we go ahead and add 10, 21. Our flights in the air is still two, so we don't need to update this variable. We cross this off the list. And then finally, we have this flight that takes off at time 17. Neither of these flights have landed yet, so we keep them in our list. We go ahead and add 17 and 20. And finally, we go ahead and update our max flights to three. At this point, we have gone through all the flights in our list. We know that no more flights will be going in the air. So our flights in the air or our max flights variable will never be greater than three. So at this point, we can go ahead and return three, which is gonna be our answer. All right, now before we jump into the code here, I wanna go ahead and write a high level algorithm of what we're doing. So the first thing that we wanna do is we want to make sure our flights are sorted by their start time. 
Now, this is also something that you want to ask your interviewer is, you know, are we guaranteed that the flight times are sorted? Uh, let's go ahead and assume that they're not. So that's going to be the first step that we do. Now that everything is sorted, we want to go ahead and loop through each one of our flights. The next thing that we want to do is we want to check if any of the flights in the air have landed before our whatever flight we're on has started. The next thing we want to do is we just want to add our current flight to the list of all the flights that are currently in the air. Finally, we want to go ahead and just check if we need to update our max flights variable. Our third step is we simply want to just return max flights. So I'm pretty happy with this algorithm here. The only concern I have is at step 2A. Now, if we want to go ahead and remove any flights that have landed, we're going to have to iterate through every single flight that's currently in the air. So say we have a list of, you know, a thousand or even like, you know, 10,000 flights. We have to loop through every single one to see which one we need to grab and remove from the flights in the air list. What we can do here is we can utilize a data structure called a min heap. Now, if you're not familiar with a minimum heap, basically what it is, is a collection of data where the minimum value can be retrieved in constant time. So we don't have to loop through the entire list. The data structure is structured in a way where we can instantly get the minimum number. We don't have to change this up too much, but I just want to make a note down here that we can use a min heap. Use a min heap for this. And that's just gonna make this step a lot more efficient. All right, so now that we have a general algorithm here, notice that we haven't written a single line of code yet we know exactly what we're gonna do. And this is what you should strive for in your interviews. The coding aspect of it should really be one of the shorter parts. You wanna to communicate to your interviewer exactly what you're doing before you write any code. So let's get into the fun part, which is writing up the actual code. All right, so I'm gonna be using Java to code this up, um, but you should be able to follow along if you know any major programming language. The first thing I wanna do is I wanna create a class for my flight objects. This will just make things easier down the line, and it also shows that you are thinking in an object oriented manner. So we have integers for our start and end times and I'm gonna go ahead and create a constructor for our flight just so it'll make things easier when we initialize a lot of them. And this is gonna be our main function here that does the heavy lifting of our algorithm. Uh, it's gonna return an integer and we're gonna call it max planes in the air and it's gonna take a list of flights as its parameter. So the first thing we wanna do is we just wanna create a variable called max flights and we're gonna go ahead and set it to zero and I'm gonna go ahead and just return it here at the end just so I don't forget. So the first thing we wanna do is we want to sort our flights by their start times. So in Java, we can just call a sort method on any type of list collection. Um, however, it doesn't know how to sort it, right? Because generally, if you just have a list of numbers, you if you call sort, it knows what that means. But if you have a list of objects, it's like, okay, what do you want me to sort on? Um, do you want me to sort on the start time, the end time? So what we have to do is we have to provide a comparator. Now the syntax for this could look a little wonky, um, but let me just go ahead and paste the code here. Um, so basically we're creating an anonymous comparator. Um, it takes one method, which is called compare. And basically uh, it says, okay, sorted by the start time. I'm not gonna go in depth with comparators, but basically that's what it's used for, is to tell the function how to sort the list. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna create that min heap that I was talking about. Now in Java, we can use a priority queue, which has the functionality of a min heap. So we're gonna go ahead and create this priority queue that takes in flights. We'll call it flights in the air. And we also need to add another comparator because it needs to know what the, you know, it returns the minimum of something, but it doesn't know what we want it to return the minimum of, start time or end time. We want it to be the end time. So again, we're gonna create another comparator here. And this time it is going by the end property of flights. So whenever we query this priority queue, it's gonna give us the minimum end time. All right, so now that we have that, we're gonna go ahead and loop through each one of our flights. So if we go back to our algorithm, after we loop through our flights, we remove any flights that have already landed. So what that's gonna look like is it's gonna be a while loop, and we're gonna say while we still have flights in the air, and our smallest flight in the air's end time is less than our current flight's start time, we wanna go ahead and just remove that from our flights in the air data structure. 
and we can just simply call a poll and that does that for us. All right, so after that step, we simply wanna go ahead and add our current flight to flights in the air. Finally, we wanna go ahead and update our max flights variable. So basically we're just saying what's bigger, the current value of max flights or however many flights are in the air. And whichever one is bigger, it updates the max flights variable. Finally, we just go ahead and return max flights. All right, so let's go ahead and look at an example of this. All right, so now we're in our main method. I've created a list of flights and I've added five flights to that list. And then I went ahead and called our max planes in the air function, passing that list of flights. And if you notice here, these are the exact same values that we used when we did our example at the beginning. So if we go ahead and run that, we're expecting a value of three and we see that we do get a value of three. So if we just wanna recap this function here, we first create our variable called max flights and we set it to zero. We then sort our flights, passing it a comparator saying, I wanna sort it by the start time. Next, we go ahead and create our priority queue, which implements the functionality of a min heap, which will always return us the minimum end time of whatever is in this data structure. Next, we loop through each flight. For each flight, we wanna go ahead and remove all the flights in the air where the end time is smaller than the start time. Afterwards, we go ahead and add our flights, our current flight to flights in the air, and then we update our max flights variable. After we break out of this for loop, we go ahead and return max flights. All right, so there you have it. Um, in a real interview, I would have tried to, you know, have a few more cases in there, try to hit some edge cases, some corner cases. Uh, but as you can see, this was not a trivial problem at all. Uh, not only do you need to know your data structures and algorithms, you need to know the ins and outs of the program language that you're using. Because for example, if you're new to Java, you probably don't know what a comparator is. Uh, you don't know that a priority queue can implement what a min heap does. So there's a lot of stuff going on there. Um, this is Facebook, so obviously it's not gonna be easy. Um, if that problem totally made sense to you, then that's awesome. Um, if not, then maybe you just need a little bit more practice. When I actually went through this problem myself, uh, I did not solve it like this. Um, I, the way I solved it was pretty inefficient. Um, I did not pass, but this was like a year ago, so I've gotten a lot better since then. Um, so maybe if I interview with Facebook in the future, hopefully I'll do a lot better. So yeah, that was the problem that I got during my Facebook phone interview. Hopefully you guys found the video helpful. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you guys hit the like button. And other than that, hope you guys have an awesome day. See you guys in the next video.